Here's one of the latest interviews from Rock and Metal Revival. If you want to hear the whole show, go to rmrshow.com. There's brand new music from Jeff Scott Soto. The song's called Freak Show from his uh, brand new album coming out called Devax. And uh, I tell you what, dude, one of our probably favorite vocalists that we have on Rock and Metal Revival is Jeff oh, Scott yeah. Soto. And For we're, sure. We are happy to have him back. It's been a long time, been three years, but on the phone with us is Jeff. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. I think I owe you guys some money for that introduction. <laughs> no, we mean it, you know, because we will accept it. We will we'll accept take cash, check. yeah. We'll take cash. Awesome. We'll take well, let me, let me give you a little correction. Uh, it's not Jeff Scott Soto album. The name of the band is called Soto. Soto. Okay. And um, I'm just a singer. I'm, I'm just like a secondary figure in the band. But uh, <laughs> yeah. the, the proper title is actually Devoc. If okay. You wanna, if we're going to get uh, technical get about correct. it. Let's get correct. Let's get technical. Yeah. And the, uh, the the title comes from my, my wife is actually uh, Bulgarian, and we go to Bulgaria every summer. Last year we were there, and um, they have a big stray cat epidemic out there. Uh, her and her kids were outside dumping the trash, and then when they came back upstairs, they came back up with this little black kitten that they found by the dumpster. And I'm like, you guys are crazy. What are you doing? You know, I, th- I thought the thing was going to be wild, and it was the tamest, the cutest little thing. It was almost like it came from a family already. It was only like four months old. Uh, so we decided to keep it for the whole summer, try to find a home for it nobody wanted it we spent close to 1500 bucks to fly it to los back. angeles so basically the cat came from the dumpsters of bulgaria to the hills of los angeles and uh and now that now the cat's all you know civilized and in a nice home and everything he's showing his wild side and the word divak is actually mean it means wild savage crazy and my wife is constantly cursing him out in bulgarian and <laughs> one of the main words she uses is divak and i said what is that <laughs> you keep saying this word and when she said it's crazy wild and savage i thought that was a great description of the new album and uh there, there you go that's why the new album is called divak you know that almost sounds like a disney movie <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, I wanted to be a little more metal than a Disney movie, yeah. guys. Come on. But I, you know, I mean, from the from the trash cans of Bulgaria to the yeah. hills, of, <laughs> hills of California. Yeah, I can hear that good. movie that movie phone voice guy right, right now. It's the, it's, <laughs> it's the feel good story of the year. Well, awesome. So you got this album's coming out just around the corner, and uh, yes, Jeff, sir. tell us a little bit about who you're working with on this album. The band, it's it's the second album. It's a sophomore album from uh, the same lineup as the first album, and they are also the same lineup as my touring band when it was just Jeff Scott Soto. When I was doing, uh, we've been doing tourings together for like, what, 2009? It's, uh, we're going on seven years now we've been together. And that's, you know, there's a bit of time that these guys put in with me as kind of hired guns for my band, but we had such an amazing chemistry when it was time to turn it into a band i went to them first and said do you guys want to do this with me instead of me going out and and starting a whole new lineup and trying to find that chemistry elsewhere and they they all jumped in with me with uh with both hands and feet first and uh and we never looked back first album we had a, a bit of a snafu we had a a few mismanagements along the way a few bumps in the road and no real game plan but this time around um myself and and a managing partner we we basically got the we got the whole game plan together and uh, and everything's ready to go we, we everything seems to be going is exactly how it should be going we've got tours lined up uh we've got a bunch of feature stuff lined up and the album is already getting a lot of attention so here we are well Sweet. you know how do you find time to do your own album you've got tso you uh in and then last year you did the uh, joel holkstra uh, you worked on that with him. That album's really which good. Which was a fantastic Thank album. You. And, I mean, Jeff, where do you find time? You know, it's it's not as bad as people think, especially I've been doing this 31 years. You, th- When this is your life, it, it literally is like what you guys do for a living. You you know you have a whole platform of things you have to set up. You map it out, and you just do it. You know, you, you, you diagram exactly what you need to get done. You, you put it in a time frame, and you just get it done. It's not rocket science to to do what you do for a living. You know, we, we are musicians by trade. We are songwriters. We are performers and artists. So you take all that knowledge and all that experience and you just keep rolling with it and you just you keep churning out, hopefully, what people consider quality material. So you did the TSO tour this uh, winter. How did that go? A lot of empty seats? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, this is my eighth year with TSO. My eight, uh, I think it was eighth or ninth tour. I, I, I lost count by now. Um, and yeah, it's, it seems to just keep growing and growing every year. It's, uh, it is an extravaganza in its own self. Um, I, I'm such 
I'm so privileged to be a part of that family. It's it's uh, something that they built from the ground up, and they got me in when the getting was good, but the getting keeps getting better. And the fact that I'm part of that machine and part of that family, I, I couldn't be happier. And it's you know it comes around the time of year when everything gets quiet for most artists. There's not yeah. really much going on out there in November, December, and this gives me an opportunity to, to do something with a bunch of people I love, and and we get to go out there and ent- entertain the masses. Yeah, because I'm a big Sabotage fan, so I I get just get a kick out of seeing old folks out there just rocking just some old <laughs> Sabotage, having no idea that this was it a metal cool. tune, man. <laughs> yeah, it, it is kind of cool. I mean, you got you got ages from seven to seventy, and it's and yeah. to see that that bridge, you know, just the. Uh, the, the crossover of the audience is just unbelievable. From uh, you, you see Grandma with her reindeer crocheted uh, sweater, and next to her is a kid with a Megadeth T-shirt. It's amazing. <laughs> now, Jeff, you mentioned earlier that you've got uh, tours in the works and plans. Uh, are you looking at a North American tour, or are we talking about uh, European Summer Festival? We are, unfortunately, only embarking on five exactly five u.s states so far uh the first one being next friday actually in uh i'm sorry next thursday we're starting up in boston we've got a, a date in new york city poughkeepsie pittsburgh orlando and baltimore and then we we hop on the monsters of rock cruise just after that they, they kind of warm up dates for the uh monsters cruise but i kind of wanted to uh feel the waters out as well because i haven't done anything in the u.s since 2007 when i did a solo run right after i got fired from journey and I don't really know what's out there. I don't. We don't know what's out there. I don't know what to expect. So we're testing the waters. We're going to see if there's indeed a, some kind of interest for Soto, for myself, and and if we can get out there and and prove this as a successful run, we're definitely going to p- push for more. Uh, I'm hoping. Hey, I'm I'm just going to say it's it's going to be after the summer because we're pretty much working all the way through the end of May and uh, and then summer begins. And usually it's all the festivals and everything, but we we missed that mark because the album was coming out, you know, in the spring, and we didn't really get to hit the summer f- festivals this year. So I'm hoping to do that for next year. Well, you know, Jeff, with the body of work that you've had uh, over your career, when you go out with Soto, do you do you go back into that catalog at all, or is it just straight stuff from the band right now? Yeah, you know what I. I really wanted to only go into the catalog of the new band because we are trying to brand ourselves as a band. It's not, it's not a revival. I already did that dance as Jeff Scott Soto. That was kind of the, the basis of me going out and doing solo tours as I could kind of mix and match. It was a kind of a JSS smorgasbord. But, uh, I don't really want to do that so much with Soto because I don't want that confusion of it to be looked upon as a novelty band or as a nostalgic band. Uh, we will, of course, tap into some of the, the more popular, the more referenced uh, resources for my career. But um, it's not going to be like a 50-50 where you're going to hear all the Malmsteen and all the, the, the other stuff that you would expect to hear at a Jeff Scott Soto show. This is, it's mainly a, a Soto band, you know, Soto show. We're going to, especially now with a new album, we, we have two albums to draw from. We're going to concentrate on this as a band. And, of course, we will tap into a few things that, to surprise people and, uh, and make them happy that uh, they probably wouldn't expect. So I noticed on your website you got a thing for Spotify. Are you a big you into the Spotify? I mean, a lot of artists really think it's kind of a ripoff. Yeah, you know what? I, I'm a firm believer, and and crucify me if you want to. I'm a firm believer that get people to listen to the music, no matter what the source is. The, the, the fact, even Spotify, even though it pays pennies to the dollar, it's it's paying more than somebody downloading it for free. So yeah, they're yeah. they're checking it out. They're listening to it and they're getting to know if they want a copy of it, they're going to buy a copy of it. But that's the bottom line. Mm-hmm. If they like it and they don't buy a copy of it, but they really want to see the band live, then my work is done in that sense. If they're going to download it for free, it's the same thing. It's not going to help our po- pockets. It's not going to help the record company's pockets, but mm-hmm. it's going to give interest in the band and it's going to make the awareness bigger for people to actually want to come see us live. And that's that's the bottom line. I mean, that's since the the first rock band out there, it was always about... The album is basically something to get people interested in the band to want to go see them live. You can't download the, the experience of going to a live show. You can you can download a, a bootleg, but you can't download the experience of standing there and getting your own opinion, your own expression of what a live concert's all about. And that, to me, is more important than somebody getting the album for free or buying it. Okay, uh, that makes sense. Um, now, I was listening to Freak Show, uh, and my only critique is, do you think it could have added some cowbell there? 
Because there, there's about the cowbells in there. There's some play. Uh, no, it needs to be loud. There is though. a cowbell. Come on, we is got there? Will Ferrell in there. He he laid down the cowbell. Of course, you just got to listen a little better. Oh, that was it. That was it. I didn't have headphones on. That was probably it's probably one of those kind of things. That's yeah. subliminal. That's yeah. yeah, you have to have the ultrasonic beats, the ones that have a frequency between thirty thousand. Oh, yeah. You know, only a dog can hear. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. No, it, it does. I, I call those kind of songs. We had the song on the first album called The Fall. I call those the kitchen sink songs because truly everything in the kitchen sink is, is on those on those mixes. And it's, <laughs> I, I feel sorry for my poor engineer. I'm, you, you turn in certain songs and he's got like 96 tracks to mix a stinking rock song. <laughs> yeah, to try to mix them all so you can hear a little bit of this, a little bit of that. So, Jeff, is, is the new CD available for uh, pre-order right now on iTunes? I don't know if it is yet in the U.S. because the U.S. label just came into the picture. It's going to be released with E1 Music again, uh, but it is going to be simultaneous release, thank God. Uh, last year we, we had that misfortune of releasing the album in Europe uh, in one month, and then it wasn't available for several months after. So it was a big mishmash of when can we get it, where can we get it, and, mm -hmm. and that really hurt us in the end. But now we've got the simultaneous release on April 1st, I believe the pre-order for the U.S. version is going to be coming out, be announced soon because we finally turned in all the goods and and this is what they were waiting for. We literally just turned everything in on Friday last week, so they're getting all their end together. And this is why the promo machine is starting now with you guys. You sure they're not messing with you? Because April first is you know April Fool's Day. <laughs> you know what? That was that was actually uh, between me and the general manager of the label in Europe. We we kind of came up with that that date as a, as a joke because i wanted to go end of march that that type of thing i just wanted it out there before we started our european tour and he said what about april fool's day i said yeah you know what i have actually got a couple april fool's tricks up my sleeve for the uh, just before the release is out so sweet. perfect sweet are we going to see it on vinyl because we're loving vinyl right now we have discussed that and again it's um it's mainly about the interest and to see what we can garner out there they don't want to go into unnecessary costs if the album's not uh, selling yeah, yeah. I get it. there's no interest yeah it, it's a it's a wait and see thing we i did express that it would be a great promo item to have and and we were definitely looking into that and getting it out on vinyl all right sweet, well sweet. jeff if people want to find out more about you and your band soto uh where's the best places to go online to find out about what's going on the main website is soto the band um dot com and, of course, JeffScottSoto.com, everything is always linked back to me. And, of course, Facebook Facebook is uh, Facebook.com slash uh, Soto Official. And, of course, the same with uh, Facebook.com slash uh, Jeff Scott Soto. God, I can't keep up with all this stuff. I know. It's on There's Twitter. It's on Instagram. It's on everything. And Slash is everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> slash is everywhere. <laughs> Well, we're feeling pretty fortunate right now. We have a new tune from Soto that uh, we're looking forward. This is a first time here for us, and a song's called Weight of the World. Jeff, tell us a little bit about this one before we yes, get out sir. of here. Yes, sir. It's, uh, it's the first official. We have an intro on the album called Divac, and then it goes right into Weight of the World, which is the first song that launches the album. It's going to be the first official single. Uh, I'm not sorry, first official video, but the second single from the album, and that's going to be coming out uh Again, just before the album is dropping and just before we hit the road. So you guys get the exclusive. All right. Thanks, Sweet. Jeff. Turn this up. It's Soto. Jeff Scott Soto, you're welcome on Rock and Metal Revival anytime. Awesome, man. I, I look forward to meeting and hanging with you guys. And in the meantime, thank you for all the support and loyalty. To catch the whole show of Rock and Metal Revival, all you have to do is check it out on these affiliates. Mega Rock Radios on Saturdays from 11 a.m. Eastern Time and on Uncontrolled Noise Tuesdays at 1 a.m., Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Time and on Saturday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern on UncontrolledNoise.com. And make sure that you leave them a message and tell them that you found Rock and Metal Revival on their stations. Enjoy this edition of Rock and Metal Revival. 